everyone. Uh, I will I will give you the class uh, today because Dr. Clark has to give a talk at California, so he will not be able to make it. And uh, I'm also your your course TA, and uh, I will be your grader for this semester. And uh, my name is Yi Song Han, and uh, below is my email address. So if you if you have any question uh, about this class, you can email to me, and uh, I will answer that. Today we will cover the uh, materials from chapter 10. Uh, and uh, if you want to look at it in your textbook, I think it's from like one, uh, 518 to 530. You can find it in your textbook. And uh, uh, basically, I will only cover part of it. So uh, I will talk about voltage gain, current gain, and power gain, and also the gain conversion to decibel, and also like two ports representations and it will be very easy so don't be afraid of this uh, first class so uh, we have used all kinds of like electron electronic devices before so like you have your cell phones and when you're driving your car you can listen to some radio and uh, sometimes you may want to know how we can like receive the signal and uh, turn it to the music we have listened right so Take, a, take the stereo uh, receiver as an example. So for a stereo receiver, we have uh, input and that is uh, 75 ohm, you can see that. And also we have the... Uh, uh, so we also have like the voltage source from 25 volts and also uh, the, the block will represent the uh, the functionalities of this uh, stereo receiver, and uh, we also have like two speakers, and uh, for the hot block, we have like two basic functions. First one is also called linear functions and nonlinear functions. So linear functions will only like uh, amplify the signal, and they will not do something like, uh, re uh, like the easy power to be will reflect re re rectification the uh, the current of the voltage and. Uh, so they are basically two functions. And uh, so, uh, imagine before we have like the uh, like the, the receiver seventy five ohm receiver, and uh, the the signal will normally appear to be like a voltage source. So how can we represent the voltage source as an equation? So we can just use this very simple one, like V is equal to V is times sine, omega is times T. This is a very simple signal, right? We also, uh, we also, we have like uh, used used it before, and uh, after the amplifier, the output will also be like exactly the same form, but it will have it will have a, a like a phase shifting. To theta, you can see that so the output becomes real equal to real times sine uh, omega is t plus theta. But the frequency omega is will now change, right? If we know the uh, the input uh, signal uh, V is, and uh, we want to find out that like the voltage gain, current gain, and the power gain of the whole system, then how can we do that? And uh, now we will uh, tell you how to do that. So the first equation here is the uh, is how to calculate the power. So uh, be careful about this power that. Uh, we, we use V of over square root of 2. So how, uh, do you know V of over square root of 2 means? 
the wheel is peak, uh, is peak voltage, right? And the V over square root 2 means that the voltage is R and is voltage, right? So when we're calculating uh, power, we need to be attention to use RMS voltage to calculate the power. And uh, with the assumption that we will like uh, we will we will desire the output power to be 100 volts, and uh, we also assume that the the load resistance is 8 ohm, and uh, the uh, source. What it is one millivolt, so we can calculate the output, uh, the output voltage based on the first equation to calculate power, right? But we can just change it to V of equal to square root of two times P O times I O. So, do you have any question about this transfer from the first equation to the second equation? So we all understand that, that right? Okay. And uh, so now that we know V of V out, and uh, we know the source voltage is one milliwatts, so we can calculate the the voltage gain. That is V of over. <coughs> I feel right. So uh, we have no V of. So we know V O equal to 40 volts and uh, V is equal to 1 million volts, right? So <laughs> the voltage uh, gain equal to V O over V S, this is very simple. <laughs> That's not visible at all. We can't read oh, you can read it. Yeah. It's too faint. <laughs> can you use I'm another color? Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see this one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for this. <laughs> okay. Uh, back to the class we have. Uh, we all equals to 14 watts. And then we assume we source equal to 1 million watts. Can I see this one? Yes. Yeah. So we have the uh, voltage gain equal to V0 over V. V is equal to 40 volts over 1 millivolts. So it should be like uh, as in 4 times, times, 4 times, right? OK, so it's very simple to calculate voltage gain. So uh, then we will want to calculate current gain, right? So. Uh, for the for the output current, uh, it is output current, and uh, we can see that uh, output current is uh, different from input current by only a, a certain uh, phase shifting. Uh, that's the only difference, and also an uh, amplitude amplification, amplification. So in order to calculate this amplitude, we can use that. Uh, this is uh, has been taught and like in introductory circuitry, I think you have learned it before, right? So I O equal to V O over R L. So we can calculate the amplitude of output current. And uh, to calculate input current, we also can use V S over R S plus R E. So we can see in the circuit to calculate the uh, input current eyes, you can just select this. So this one is R. This one is R in. So just like we have done before, V is over eyes plus R in. This is the input current graph. And <laughs> I know this is very simple, so I just want to make sure all of you understand this. Okay. And uh, uh, for the output current, we all equal to I O equal to V O over I O. So now that
that we know are in, we know I, uh, we know are in, we know I also the uh, the current kind equal to I O or I in. Just substitute the equation with the detail value, so you can get the current scheme. Okay, so uh, these equations tell you how to calculate the uh, voltage gain, current gain, power gain, kind of things. And uh, uh, one thing you need to be attention is that uh, here when we're calculating the voltage gain, we, we try to use like a vector a representation of this. Uh, it's not just divided by amplitude by amplitude. So it will be like amplitude amplitude with uh, the degree. So you can see that V over V is times uh, degree theta, right? So how to calculate the degree theta? Uh, it's just the the output phase. For example, uh, this is uh, 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 you have an uh, input uh, like voltage V is, and uh, you have an uh, output voltage V of right. So the theta here is just this degree. It's just uh, theta out minus theta in equal to the theta. Can I see it so? Okay. So the theta measurement here is the, uh, the, the, the phase difference between the input and the output, okay? So that's the current scan. And uh, I believe the theta of the current scan is exactly the same with the theta of voltage scan, okay? Uh, do you have any questions about the part that I mentioned before? If you have any question, just raise your hand, okay? And uh, as for the power gain, uh, so it's just exactly like the, the way we calculate the current gain and the voltage gain. But the only difference is that when we're trying to calculate the uh, power gain, we use the, the RMS voltage, not the peak uh, voltage. Although the result is the same, but you need to make sure you write exactly like this one. Don't use peak voltage, uh, okay? So it will be uh, maybe be a wrong way to use peak voltage when you are taking an exam. So you will not get the, the credit you want, okay? And uh, we know that uh, we, uh, we saw that <coughs> when we are trying to calculate the uh, voltage gain, we have this value. So it's very big, right? So we don't want to write this kind of big value every time we're trying to, uh, to use it. So we just want to uh, have a, a simple way to, uh, to represent the voltage gain. So then we will introduce the Isabel uh, representation. Okay, so the reason why we using why we use decibel representation is that uh, decibel can make the large uh, uh, value most most way more smaller than the the, the original one. Okay, so uh, so to use a uh, decibel representation, you only need to remember three equations. That is, so for voltage gain is equal to in dB, okay, equal to 20 times log, so it's based on 10, and uh, times the AV that is not in this representation. So current gain is in dB is equal to also 20. Now based on time, we add, and uh, the power gain to dB is equal to 10 times log 10 times A T. Okay. So you only need to remember these three equations, 
and uh, I have a question for you. So do you know why we used 20 here, but we used 10 here? Do, do, does anyone can answer the question? Yeah. Um, the function of voltage squared. Yeah, so exactly. Factor two. Factor two. Okay. Uh, so, so ha, ha, does anybody hear what he has talked about? That when we use twenty, not ten here. You could re rewrite that as twenty log yeah. square root or parentheses. Yeah. Square. Yeah. Exactly. Voltage. Power. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, normally we when we are calculating power, so it's equal to like v squared times r. Right. Oh, over oh, oh, r. equal to r squared times r. Right. So we see there are power here. So we when we are uh, substitute this into this logarithm, and uh, the power will be lower down to times two. Right. So do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. So then. Uh, <coughs> I want you to do one thing is to uh, try to remember this uh, this form, and you may use it a lot in the future uh, calculation. Okay, it's very easy to remember this. Like for example, uh, the gain is one thousand, and the uh, it's sixty dB in the decibel representation. Okay, so just try to remember this. It will make it more easier when when you're trying to take an exam. Okay, so this is just the uh, an example to tell you that for a very large uh, value can be represented for a very small value in decibel representation. Okay, so now we know the how to calculate the voltage gain, and uh, we also know how to calculate that, that the power gain current scan, this kind of things. And uh, uh, next, we, we just want to know uh, that we use a very simple uh, example in the previous uh, example, right? And uh, for a real uh, amplifier, it must be very complicated. And uh, so we don't want to start with a very complex, uh, complex uh, model at the first beginning. So we just want to uh, simplify the complex model to a very simple one that we can handle with. So like two port model is just this kind of thing. Uh, it can simplify the complex model to a very simple two port model. So we can see that this model has uh, input ports and output ports. Right? Uh, I don't know if you have a, uh, any any of you have uh, been contacted with like. Uh, like this kind of model before. Uh, have you been taught about this model before, like in your introductory uh, circuits or some kind of courses? No, right? Okay, so I'll just uh, talk, uh, talk about it quickly. So Now. So I want to 
So back to our work, uh, lecture. And uh, uh, in, in this lecture, uh, they use a more detailed uh, representation of this kind of uh, G model, G model two port model. And uh, you can see that they, they also use exactly the same equation I have read down, right? And uh, mm, you have to calculate this like G11, G12, uh, G21, G22, this kind of value. So uh, while we are trying to calculate this, uh, for example, for these equations, we have like uh, two values here, but maybe uh, uh, to make things simple, we will like uh, make this one zero. So that we can just directly uh, calculate g11 by d1, i1 by v1, right? And if, if we want to calculate g12, then we can make v1 zero. So <coughs> we can calculate g12 by d1 i1 over i2, right? Do you know what I'm saying? <coughs> uh, anyone has a question about this? Okay, so uh, G21, G22 are exactly the same, so we just post one zero and calculate the, uh, the, the, the parameters over here. And uh, do you notice that when we are trying to like put this on zero, what kind of circuit will this circuit be? Like open circuit or short circuit? Can you tell me? Okay. If we make this one zero, so for this two post model, the input, uh, the output current is zero. So the output port becomes an open circuit or short circuit. Anyone tell me? Open. Open circuit. Right. Um, so if you, if you report the uh, V1 to zero, then what kind of uh, input port will be? Open or short? <coughs> input V1 to be zero? Short circuit, okay, very good. And uh, so you can see this equation over here. So in, in order to calculate G11, we make G I2 be zero, and uh, it will be an open circuit. And uh, so exactly for G12, G21, G22, okay. Uh, do you understand what these equations are talking about? You all, you all understand that, right? Okay. <coughs> uh, now I want to uh, to give you an example to make you understand it more carefully to look clearly. Okay. So if you want, you can just grab uh, to draw this. Uh, circuit down. <coughs> okay, we can see what we have over here. So we have a two-port model, right? Uh, and uh, we have a, a resistor that is 20 kilo ohm, and uh, with a resistor over here is 200 kilo ohm. And uh, we also have a independent, uh, we have a dependent current source that is 50 times I1, okay? Uh, that's all we got. So when we have these uh, three components, we want to calculate the G model, the parameters of G model, G11, G12, G21, G22, <coughs> okay.
I drew the uh, circuit down over here and uh, now focus on the equation over here. So if you want to calculate G11, then we, we make I2 to be zero, mm -hmm. right? So G11 equal to I1 over V1 when I2 is equal to zero, right? Okay. What does I2 <coughs> be zero mean? It means that the output port is an open circuit, right? So we just move this off. Now it's an open circuit, right? Uh, so it means that there is no current at these two ports. Okay. And uh, if, we, if we want to calculate the, the I1 here, we can use a uh, uh, KCL, that is Kirchhoff's law, current law. Okay. Use KCL. Uh, but how we use KCL over here, we can know that, uh, notice that V1 over here, it should be equal to I1 times 20 kilo ohm plus the voltage as uh, 200 kilo ohm, right? So uh, if we want to calculate the voltage, then we must know the current. <coughs> so if you want to know the current, then we should use KCL to calculate this current. Okay. So for example, at this node, uh, if we use KCL, then we can know that the current at here is equal to, I, I will just make it like I is okay. So I is should be equal to I1 plus 50 I1. I. Well, it should be I plus 15 <coughs> okay? Uh, does anybody know how I write this, this down? You all know this, right? And uh, now we have the current at the 200 kilo ohm resistor. Now we can calculate the voltage at this one. So it should be 200 kilo ohm times I. So I is equal to I plus 15 R, ah, right? So I write it again. So it should be, uh, it should be I. Go to I times 20 kilo ohm plus 200 kilo ohm times I plus 15 R. Ah. Okay, so just use this, use this equation, uh, we can move this, uh, we can just combine these two and uh, divide it by V1, and we can calculate G11. I one over V1. Because I know I have given a terrible lecture. It's my first time to give the lecture uh, for so many students. Okay, uh, if you don't understand this, just ask me uh, Im immediately. Okay. Uh, so now we uh, we have calculated the G11, and uh, then we also have G12. 
uh, we also have G1, 2, G2, 1, and G2, 2 over here, right? So we notice that uh, when we are calculating G11, we need R2 equal to 0. So uh, for these three values, when we are calculating them, so do you think which one should make R2 to be 0? I can't see that um, oh. equation. The V1 equals, <coughs> like the ending is 200k on, is that time IS divided by 4? Uh, no, just IS. Oh, okay. Just IS, okay. Um, do, can you see this in the, uh, in the back, back seat? No. Uh, just this first one you said, uh, yeah. I want to equal to 0? Yeah. Right? Oh, no, that's okay. Can I see it right? So it should be I to be equal to zero, I right now. Oh, okay. 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 Um, so do you know why I make I two to be zero? You can tell this, you can decide this by uh, look at this equation, okay? So if I two equal to zero, then we can just don't look at this equation. So we can calculate G1 one, one, right? That's the reason why I make I two to be I two to be zero. Okay, so back to the question I, I have talked about. So uh, between these three parameters, uh, which one do you think we should make that R2 to be there, that to get this one? Which one? Yeah, this one. Yeah, which one? Can you tell me? G21. G21, you got to it, very good. So we should make, uh, to calculate G21, we should make I2 to be zero. We can also see this from this equation, okay? So if we want to calculate G21, then we should don't look at this one, right? <coughs> so then we can calculate G21. Okay, uh, so if we want to make I2 to be zero, it's exactly like, like this one, right? but uh, the equations to calculate G21 has changed to like this. Equal to G2 over V1. Right? So, based on this circuit, we should calculate, we want to calculate this. So, that means we want to build a, re a relationship between V2 and V1. Right? I saw somebody sleeping now. <laughs> okay. Uh, just go. <laughs> and uh, if we want to build the, the relationship between V2 and V1, then we should back to this uh, circuit. Okay. Uh, so we have know that. Uh, uh, we, we, have, we, have, we have know that uh, V1 is kind of has some relationship to I1 and uh, it has been calculated out, right? Oh, yeah. Um, on that line below yeah. Uh, yeah. where you've got the, the vertical equal sign, I think, or... Oh, do you mean this one? Yeah, what is, what is, V1 is equal to, what is written in parentheses? Oh, right this here? one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just, I write this down just because uh, I want to make like V1 equal to like K times I, right? I okay. just want to make this equation to become this kind of equation. Okay. Okay, so uh, the first term is based on this one. Uh, then I have I plus 50, I become to 50, 1 times I, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, if we combine these two together, uh, I times 20 kilo to can be oh, okay. I times gotcha. 200 kilo, okay. uh, adding them together, okay? Okay, so uh, just I have talked about uh, 
Just like the way I calculate uh, G11, you can uh, calculate G21, G G12, G22, uh, like what I have said before. Okay? Because the time is out, uh, I only got 10 minutes left, so I will not, I will not introduce uh, all of you the detailed way to calculate the other three parameters. Okay? So if you want to know <coughs> how to calculate this, you can just turn to your textbook, I think it's uh, at page to uh, five to eight, okay? And page two fifty eight. You can find the uh, yeah. Are we gonna get these slides? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, you, of course you can get this. Uh, how can you uh, maybe you can email to me and I will uh, email off you the uh, the slide, okay? And uh, the last topic is about mismatch. Okay, so we all know uh, when we are like uh, taking the process of like power transfer or some kind of like that, uh, we know we always focus on uh, uh, re re imp impedance match. Okay, we want to make the uh, the source resistor to be exactly like the load re resistor, so we can transfer the power with no. Uh, with no with no loss, right? But for the amplifier, it's different. We want to make it mismatch. That means like the V source should be way uh, way the the R in should be way more larger than R S. Then we can make the uh, ampli amplification uh, larger than before. Okay, but how we derive this amplification? And uh, so, just look at this one. Uh, so, we, uh, when we are trying to calculate, calculate the voltage gain, we have AV over here. So, we also want to cap to build a relationship between V out and V S, right? And uh, to build this one, we can just first first of all we can look at this part, and uh, the V out should be like. Every every one this part uh, it should be uh, times the RL over R plus IL. Okay, John, you all understand this one, right? Okay, and uh, then we also uh, then we should look at this part. So this V one equal to V S times uh, R E <coughs> over R S plus R E. Right. So it's uh, these two equations just. Uh, it's kind of like divided the voltage by the R in one, right? You understand this one, right? Can you make it bigger? Yeah, yeah. voltage divided by Yeah. I say, can you make it bigger? Make it bigger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, you understand this part? 
and uh, uh, also for the current scan over here, I O over I I one. We can count, we can calculate I O by uh, divided V O by R I O. So we have the output current, and uh, we also can calculate uh, the input current by divided rays over the two resistance, and uh, we have this equation. So the final current scan over here is this. And the biggest current scan is A times I <coughs> plus I over I. So, yeah. So do you understand this part? Mm, if, you have, if you have any question, you can bring it out now. So uh, if you don't have any question, then the class will be over. Okay. And uh, you also can take my uh, office number down. My office number is uh, 379. If you have any question regarding this course, uh, you can just come to my office and ask me. Can you say that again? Uh, 379. <laughs> <laughs>